Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter five is kinetic energy, or kinetic energy or kinetic energy. <laughs> All right, so in physics, an object that, that is in motion is said to have kinetic energy. The following formula can be used to determine a, a moving object's kinetic energy. <laughs> Ke is equal to half times m times v squared. Okay, I couldn't find any, any two over here. I couldn't find a, the exponent two. So I just had to write squared. All right, so Ke is equal to half times m times v squared. The variables in the formula are as follows. Ke is the kinetic energy, m is the object mass in kilograms, and v is the object velocity in meters. Uh, in meters per second, I'm sorry. Write a function named kinetic energy that accepts an object's mass in kilograms and velocity in meters per second as arguments. The function should return the amount of kinetic energy that the object has. Write a program that asks the user to enter values for mass and velocity, and then calls the kinetic energy function to get the object kinetic energy. All right, so we've been given a formula over here, and if that formula is used to calculate the kinetic energy, given the mass and velocity. We should write a function that's going to accept in as arguments the mass and velocity, and it should return the kinetic energy. The user is going to basically provide these uh, inputs, mass and velocity. So that's what we're going to do. Let's first go ahead and define the function that's going to go ahead and calculate the kinetic energy. Right? It says we should go ahead and find um, a create a function called kinetic energy. Right? Over here, it's written in, um, in a it's na it's written differently. But I'm going to go ahead and use camel case to write a, to write the kinetic energy. So it's not going to be kinetic energy and it's not going to be kinetic underscore energy. It's going to be first of all, let's go ahead and define the function. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and name it. Kinetic instead of kinetic energy this way, which is how the book says we should go ahead and name it. I'm just going to use comma case and do it this way. Capitalize. Well, the first letter of the first word is a small letter, but any word after that, each it any word after that, any word after the first word, its first letter is capitalized. So it's going to be kinetic energy this way. All right. So let's see if this method is going to uh, so this function is going to accept in arguments. And yes, it does because it says over here. That's a function named kinetic energy that accepts an object mass in kilograms and velocity in meters per second. So we know it's going to accept in the objects. Sorry, it's going to accept in the, uh, the mass, right? So let's go ahead and define a field or a parameter for mass. I'm going to say it's going to need a mass. Let's go ahead and do it, make this user mass. It's going to need a mass. This user mass is going to it's going to hold whatever value the user the user enters for user mass. Okay, for the for mass. And it's going to also need the velocity in meters per second. So let's go ahead and define user velocity. And then in this, once we have these values, we can go ahead and basically calculate the, the kinetic energy and then have it returned. So the kinetic energy, let's go ahead and create a variable that's going to hold that. Or let's let's first you know work with the formula. So to, so to define the kinetic energy, it's half, right? So one divided by two, which is half. Now I want that to evaluate first, so I'm going to go ahead and surround surround them with parentheses. Half multiplied by, okay, so half times m, which is the user mass, m stands for the mass, so we the user, the user is going to give us this when they call this method, or this function. So user user mass, I just copied it. And then we are multiplying with the v squared. All right, now with the, um, I think the previous, uh, previous program, or the, I think the last two or so, there was something similar where we had to um, calculate the, um, um, calculate something, and then we also had to square one of the values. Now you can either do it do it this way. Um, so v squared can be. So we know v is our, our user velocity. If you want to square v, you can you can do it in, in a couple of ways. In the in the previous program, I, I think which is falling distance. I think to to I, I think I did it this way. User squared, I wrote it this way. User velocity. Okay, exponent. So the two multiplication signs means exponent. So user velocity exponent two me will mean uh, user velocity squared. That's one way to do it. Or well, since I did I in the falling distance program or the previous program, I just I did it this way. I'm just going to change it around a little bit in this one. Let's go ahead and import the math module. So import math module. And the math module has several functions for um, calculating you know things like the power or the square root. In this case, we're going to use the, the pow function, p o w function. All right, so we want to go ahead and calculate or find the velocity squared, which is the user velocity, right, squared. All right, so it's going to be, to, using the math module, it's going to be math.pal, okay, 
And the mapped order power is basically a function that accepts in the first number and the second number. It's going to raise the first number to the, to the second number or to the power of the second number. So in other words, I want to raise user velocity Um, user velocity, right, and then two, right. So basically, it's go, it's taking two arguments, a user velocity, and then and and uh, it's taking two arguments, the first argument here and the second argument here. So it's going to raise the first number here with the, sec the, with the uh, to the power of the second number. So it's going to be user velocity exponent two. That's what this is going to be using the math or path. All right. So yeah, I think that's yeah, that's that's fine. So we know this calculation over here is going to result in the, the kinetic energy. So let's go ahead and find a place to start. We have to go ahead and, and start it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable. I'm going to call it kinetic energy. And then I'm going to set it equal to the result of this calculation, this whole calculation, right? This whole calculation. And then once we have the kinetic energy, let's go ahead and return it. Let's return kinetic energy here. All right, so now we're done with this function. Now the question said that we should write a program, <coughs> sorry, the question said we should write a program that asks the user to enter values for mass and velocity, and then if, and then call the kinetic energy method, or the function, sorry, I keep on saying method. It's, it's pretty much the same thing, just a slight difference. I mean, it's the same thing, actually. A, a method is a function of an object, and a function is just a function, all right? Okay, so, after, after we ask the user for the two values, the velocity and, the, and then the mass, it wants us to go ahead and call the kinetic energy function we created um, to basically calculate the kinetic energy based on the values of the user and then the user, which is um, the, velocity, the user velocity and then the mass, user mass. All right, so now we have defined our kinetic energy. Let's go ahead and define a main method. Okay, that's where we are going to run our program. Now the main method for so many programs is your starting point. That, that's the method in so many programs that that's starts automatically when you run your program. That's the first one that starts. And it's the first method that basically calls, calls all, all other methods. Basically it's where our program resides. That's basically where we're going to write our program. Right? So let's go ahead and define a main method that's going to basically run our program. That's basically call all our methods, uh, so all, all our functions, in this case kinetic energy. So main, the main method is not going to accept any arguments. What we want to do the first time is ask the user for the values. Ask the user for the user mass and then the user velocity. Now, since chapter five is all about functions, let's go ahead and create a function to ask the user for these details, right? Let's do that. We can. So before we continue with the main function, let's define another function and call it ask user for details. Ask user for details. And let's create in well, let, let, over here we, we typed in parentheses. It's not going to accept in any argument, really. All this, this method is going to do is ask the user for the values, for the user mass and then the user velocity. So over here, I'm going to use the input function to ask the user for the details. The first detail I'm going to ask is, please enter the mass, right? Now we know the input function. So the input function is going to go ahead and display this message to the user. And then it's going to wait for the user to type in something. Now whatever is typed is going to return as a string. The input function by default always returns a string, no matter what, even if the user types in a number. Well, in this case, I'm asking for the mass, which is a number, right? It can be 50 point something. The input function always returns a string. But the thing is, we don't need a string. We need a number so we can use it in calculations, right? So in other words, we have to basically convert, you know, what I'm trying to say is we have to go ahead and convert the string that is being returned. The input function always returns a, returns a string. We have to go ahead and ret uh, convert the string that is being returned to a number so we can go ahead and use it in, in calculations or in math. So I'm going to go ahead and call the, the float function, right? And then I'm going to surround it by everything the user typed. I'm basically surrounded by, uh, and surround the, uh, everything the, the user typed with parentheses. I'm surrounding um, what is being returned by the input function with parentheses. In other words, I'm converting everything that the user has typed, okay? To a float, a float because the user can type in 50.6 or 20.8, so we need we need a float, right? And this value here, after it's been convert converted to a float, is going to be our mass. So let's go ahead and create a variable. I'm going to call it user mass, and then set it to uh, whatever result is being returned. Well, it's, yeah, it's being returned from the input function. Now, 
This user mass here is not the same as this user mass. They are two different variables, although they have the same name. They are two different variables because they reside in two different functions. They don't see each other. As far as this user mass is concerned, um, um, so as far as this method is con this function is concerned, this this user mass is you know basically the scope of this user mass is within this function, and then the scope of this user mass is within this function. So it doesn't matter if they have the same name. Okay, they only this is only this user mass is only seen here. And this user mass is only seen here. All right, so now that we have the user mass, let's also go ahead and ask for the velocities. It's going to be the same thing. Let's just change this to user velocity instead of user mass. And then we want to say, please enter the velocity. And then in Python, we can go ahead and return two more than one variable in the function. So instead of just returning one in most programming languages, in fact, while, while, while you can, you can use other means to return um, more than one value, right? But then in Python, it's easier. It's just, I think, in, built in it to just be able to just straightforward multi, um, send multiple values. All right, so we would have the user mass and usability by now. Or wh what we can do is we can go ahead and return it. We can return both values and say, for example, user mass comma user velocity like this. And then when we are receiving it in main, we have to basically create two variables that's going to store these respectively. So this is going to be returned first, and then this is going to be returned second. So the, first, the, the variable that I also typed when I'm receiving it is also should be arranged in the same manner because it's going to be stored in respectively, right? And you see that in a second. So when we are done, let's go ahead and return user mass and user velocity. 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 All right. So in main, let's go ahead and first call the ask user for details function. Ask user for details. And that's going to basically ask these, uh, the user for these details and then return it. No, sorry, no semicolon. Keep on thinking about um, Java. It's going to return whatever the user typed. All right, so when it returns it, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to go ahead and create another variable. I'm going to call it user mass. Again, it doesn't matter if the names are the same because they're in different functions. So I'm going to call it. Um, Call var uh, create variables use user mass to store the user mass that's being returned, and then another variable called user velocity to store the user velocity that's being returned. Okay, as for details, is going to re return user mass and user velocity. So the variables that I also as, um, create here should be arranged in such a way that it's re it's respective to this. This is being returned first, so this is, so it's going to store it, store it in the first variable I specified here. This is this is being returned second, so it's going to go ahead and store it in the second var variable I define here. So now I'll have the two va the values, user mass and user velocity. Now I can go ahead and call the, the kinetic e energy fun function, the kinetic energy function here. And then since I have both values, I can go ahead and, re and, and pass them in. I have the user mass and I, I have the user velocity. The kinetic energy function is designed to accept in the user mass and the, and the user velocity. So let's go ahead and pass in those values. So user mass is going to go here as the first um, argument. And then, uh, um, yeah as the first argument, and then user velocity is going to be the second argument here. And we know that the kinetic energy is going to basically return the kinetic energy. So let's go ahead and create a, a variable called kinetic energy, and then store the result in, in there. We know the kinetic energy function, this is a function and this is a variable name. The function is going to return the, uh, the kinetic energy based on the user mass and the user velocity. And, it's, uh, and, it's, and whatever value that's being returned, we want to go ahead and store it in kinetic energy here. So we can have the final result so and display it. All right.